For this problem, you're asked to solve for the complex power consumed by the load. We start by calculating the reactance of the inductor. It's a 60 hertz system. When we do that calculation, that works out to an impedance of J2 ohms, which we're going to put down here on the schematic. We'll review the rules for an ideal transformer before we get started. We know the turns ratio, which is defined as the number of turns in the primary over the number of turns in the secondary is equal to the voltage ratio. And it's also equal to the current in the secondary over the current in the primary. But be careful because the current is, is upside down. Again, you see the secondaries on the top and the primaries on the bottom. For an ideal transformer, the complex power in the primary is equal to the complex power in the secondary. The final property we should pay attention to is the primary impedance is equal to the turns ratio squared multiplied by the secondary impedance. That's known as reflection. And I'll come back to that later in this video to show how it can save you a lot of work. To get this problem started, let's calculate the voltage on the secondary winding. Now the turns ratio is 5 to 10. And if that follows through, we see this is a step up transformer and the voltage on the secondary will be 240 volts. From there, we can calculate the current as a voltage divided by the impedance of the load, which gives us about 23 and a half amps at an angle of negative 11 degrees. This is inductive as the angle of the current is negative. From there, we can calculate the current back onto the primary if we choose. And that works out to be about 47 amps at a phase angle of negative 11 degrees. Next, we calculate the power. We can do it on the secondary side if we'd like, where we say that complex power is the voltage times the complex conjugate of the current. Forgive me, that should have been 11 degrees, not negative 11 yielding a complex power in the secondary of 5.6 kVA at an angle of 11.3 degrees. We know the complex power in the primary is the same as the complex power in the secondary. Just to show that, we'll do the same calculation again. So now it's 120 volts by our 47 amps at angle 11 degrees. Again, I made that mistake on signs. Be careful of that. Anyway, when we're done, we end up with the same 5.6 kVA at an angle of 11.3 degrees. We can sketch the power triangle for this inductive load. Here's our 5.6 kVA. There's our 11 degrees. And I find it useful to put these into terms of real power, which is 5.5 kW, and reactive power, which is 1.1 kVars. Now, I mentioned this reflection property, and I want to show you how that could save you a little bit of time in this particular calculation. Now remember, we're going to reflect that 10 plus J2 across the transformer. The impedance on the primary becomes the turns ratio squared multiplied by 10 plus J2, which gives us 2.5 plus J0.5. If we were to redraw that, we would say that that 2.5 plus J0.5 is connected directly across our 120 volt source. It's an equivalent circuit. Again, what we've done is we've taken the load that's on the secondary and we have reflected it across the transformer over to the primary. You'll remember these equations, which tell us the complex power is equal to the voltage by the complex conjugate of the current or the magnitude of the current squared multiplied by the impedance, or the magnitude of the voltage squared divided by the complex conjugate of the impedance. And I will leave it up to you to calculate what the power is at this point.